Hi everybody, my name is Patrick Blank and I'm the lead level designer here at Runic Games. And today I want to give everybody a bit of a preview of our editor and some of its functionality, mainly relating to scripting and how we use that in level design. So what I've done here is I've created a small room and what I would like to do is make this a three-part series. Uh, the first part showing some of the introduction to getting a level playable um, and some basic tricks for spawning creatures and setting up a trap. And then in the next part, I want to continue to build out this level and show something different scripting wise. And then finally, in the third video, show the end room and show how we do um, some other scripting elements there. So let's go ahead and get started with this first part. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add a player start so that the player can spawn into this level. So over here in the left hand side, this is where all of our folders are and actors are organized. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to call this Properties. And this is where we'll be putting all of our actors for this video. And in here, I'm simply going to right click and I'm going to go down to Logic and add what's called a Property node. This Property node has lots of different functionalities it can do. Uh, it defaults as a player start, as you can see over here on the right hand side. But there's a drop down which enables lots of other functionality. So we're going to go ahead and leave it at a player start for now. You can see it created this arrow indicator on the floor. Um, I'm going to move this into position and rotate it. And the arrow it's pointing, the direction it's pointing is the way the player will be facing when they spawn into the level. So I'm going to come back over here and rename this player start to keep it organized. Now the second thing we want to do is this is a small room for the player to spawn in. So we don't want them to be immediately overwhelmed by monsters. Um, so we're going to add what's called a no spawn region inside of this room and that basically tells the engine not to initially spawn any monsters uh, where there's a no spawn region. Now that is also through a property node so I'm just simply going to take our player start and duplicate it. I'm going to change its uh, value over here in the drop down to a no spawn region. And you can see it changed from an arrow to a box. So I'm going to go ahead and center this in the room and then scale it to fit the room. There we go. Now nothing will spawn in there initially. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to rename this. Okay, and then I'm going to leave it active, but I'm going to set it visible to false so that we can see the room a little bit better. Okay, so this is the one doorway out of this room, and when the player goes to leave the room, let's give them a bit of a surprise and let's have a gate shoot up blocking their path and then we're going to spawn some monsters behind them and they'll have to kill all of the monsters for the gate to come down so that they can proceed. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add a gate. So let's come back over here to our folder and let's call what's, uh, add what's called a layout link timeline. I'm going to rename this to gate and then let's go over to its properties and navigate to our gate actor. There we go. So that, that the gate shot up initially. Let's set that to not start on load and rotate this and move it into the doorway. This will be hidden initially until it's triggered and then it will shoot up. There we go. So now let's add our trigger. Come back over here and we're going to add a player box trigger. And I'm going to go ahead and scale this to fit the room a little bit better. We want this to cover the entire width so that there's no way the player can get past it. Move this out a bit. So anytime the player gets within this box, it'll trigger the gate to go up. And before we hook this up, let's add our unit spawner. Come back to our folder and unit spawner. You can see it created this uh, green circle indicator on the floor here. This is where your monsters will spawn. And you can change this and you can change the shape as well. So first thing, let's go ahead and decide what type of monsters we want. And let's go ahead and go with just um, some skeleton warriors. And we'll spawn about eight of them. And let's change the uh, size and shape of this circle here. Let's go ahead and make this larger. And let's hollow it out a bit. 
And then let's cut that in half. Let's change the angle. And then finally, let's rotate it. There we go. So let's move that a little bit closer. So the monsters we have set will spawn within this green indicator here. And there's a few different options you have for that in the release order. We can do clockwise, counterclockwise, or random. We're going to leave it at clockwise for now. Okay, so now that's all set up. So now we just need to add a logic group and hook it all up. And come back over to my folder and go down to logic and add a logic group. And here's our logic editor window. And this is where we do all of our scripting. It's all visual drag and drop. So I'm going to have to drag this off screen for a second and bring the uh, actors in here and then I'll bring it back. And here we go. So you can see our three actors. Here's our trigger. Here's our gate. Here's our unit spawner. So what I'm going to do on, the, on our trigger is right click on it. I have these options. I'm going to go to outputs. And I'm going to go down to triggered first time. So this will only trigger once as opposed to every time the player enters the uh, box. And then on my gate actor, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to input. And I'm going to go down to play. So now these both have uh, connector points, so we're simply going to select one and drag it to the other. And there we go, they're now connected. And we're going to do the same thing with our unit spawner. I'm going to add a input spawn units and we drag that to the same output on our trigger. Whoops. There we go. So now what we want is once the player kills all of the enemies that we spawn, we want the gate to go back down allowing them to proceed. So what we want to do then is on the unit spawner we want to add an output of all monsters dead. So once they're all dead it'll fire off this signal. And then on our gate we want to add another input to play it backwards. So it'll go back under uh, the ground. So let's connect these two here. And there we go. We're all set. So let's go ahead and save this. And then let's uh, jump in game. There's two ways you can play. You can click the green arrow up here in the left hand corner which will start you wherever your player start is in the level. Or you can simply hold down control and right click anywhere in the level and go to start here. Which is very handy if you have a larger map you don't want to start all the way back where your player start is. But for now I'm just going to go ahead and use the uh, player start. Okay, there we are. Now we're in game. Here's our room. And when you're playing an editor, you can see that it still displays your uh, scripting icons. So here's where the skeletons will spawn, and here's our box trigger. So let's go ahead and see what happens. The gate went up. Skeleton spawned. Last skeleton. My dog got him and the gate went down and more creatures came out. So let's go ahead and clear these guys. And there we go. So that's it for part one. Uh, when we go ahead and set up part two, we'll expand this level and we'll uh, show you something new. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Thanks.